The lead of his uncle, Rod Jones, was a top-tier criminal and hard man from Middlesbrough, sadly passed now. If anyone knew Lee Duffy, it was his uncle Rod, who was six foot three with a sledge on my right hook, Lee idolised. In Jamie Boyle's excellent book, Lee Duffy, The Hole of the Moon, the late Rod Jones talks the truth of his nephew, the Duffy, and tells the story of when he knocked hardman Paul Sykes' spark out. The hardest Lee fought with was a fella I fought with, and his name was John Cateesdale. Lee ran down from his house on Keir Hardy Crescent, South Bank in just a pair of shorts to the jovial Monk pub, in North Ormsby, which was a good two miles. And when he got there, he ended up breaking Jonker's jaw. Jonk had a lot of the doors in town, like the Wellington, among many other places. And Lee was only around 18 years old at the time in 1983. I think he made a statement doing that. And it was almost like Lee saying, well, I'm here now, you know. It was a bit of a change of the guard, if you like. The young cub beats the old lion kind of thing. Lee worked on a lot of doors, but he never ran any like Jonker did, because he never had a business brain. Lee worked on the doors at Rumours with Ducko and the Jaffrey brothers from Thorntree. One thing I will say about our Lee is, Lee wasn't having long fights. Lee was explosive. He had a big right hook, which was a family thing. I had it too. Most of Lee's fights were over in seconds. Boom! And that was it. I'm six foot three, and Lee got all my family genes in that respect. My father was the same. Lee's father, Laurie Senior, was also a right handful in his time as well as Lee's grandfather. So Lee really came from a natural fighting family and from a long line of nasty bastards. Lee loved his grandfather and he used to sit on his knee as a boy and listen to his stories of how he used to fight at Forest Street, bare knuckle to make up his wages to get back what he just spent in the pub and drink. Lee's dad, Laurie Senior, was also very sadistic with his violence. My sister Brenda was with him one time when a fellow who lent Laurie Senior five pounds asked for it back. With that, Laurie Senior beat the poor guy up, and when he'd finished, he ripped the five-pound note up and stuck it in the unconscious man's mouth to add insult to injury. Many times I had to go sort Laurie Senior out because he'd been beating my sister up. Whenever I went and gave him a kicking, our Brenda always used to stick up for him, and she'd be hitting me. He didn't treat my sister well at all. I don't think he ever had a job either, and he used to drink every day. Many times, when our Lee was really young, he would be sat in the front room, and he would see me giving his old man good hidings. So you could say Lee was brought up with violence. Of course, I wished he had never seen that, but I could never stand by and watch while old Laurie gave our Brenda the hidings he did. He once even flung her out the bedroom window and she broke several bones. Our Lee hated a fellow named Paul Sykes from his time in jail. Absolutely hated him. It's been alleged that Sykes had raped many a UIP in Durham jail. I myself again had to carry on with Sykes. I knocked him out in a Contessa club in Middlesbrough. A fellow named Freddie Charville threatened me with Paul Sykes and he paid him to come up from Wakefield to Middlesbrough. I knew Sykesy from jail many years before, so I knew who he was. This Charville had paid Sykesy to come and take me out. It was a Friday night and I was walking in the Contessa when I saw Peter Matthews on the door. He said to me, I wouldn't go in there if I was you, Rod. Freddie's got a fellow up from Wakefield to put it on you. So I went in and when I went in, Sykesy jumped up and put his hand out to shake my hand. And I've hit him with a family right hook straight away. Bang! And a few others for good measure. And he never got time to react. I was blessed with the power of the punch, just like our Lee and Sykes. He didn't know what hit him. The reason I caught Sykes like that was because he knew me. But he knew me by a different name, which was Don Cross. That's the name I had in prison. So I was tipped off, if you like. Sykes didn't have a clue that my name was Rod Jones. When Sykes came to Middlesbrough to sort this Jonesy bloke out, He was sat in the club and he'd had a few drinks whilst I was stone cold sober. And I left him sprawled across the floor with his senses shattered. Sykes was into interfering with lads in jail when I was there. I know that. Sykes used to come to the Baltimore Hotel in the Longlands and get pissed in there and cause havoc by touching women's arses in front of their husbands and abusing all the bar staff in there on a regular basis. The man was a total animal. Malcolm, the owner, used to ring me up and ask me to get Sykes out of the Baltimore, which I did do a few times. A few of my family said over the years that Lee grew up looking up to me. Myself, I think he probably did, but it's not a thing to comment on without sounding big-headed, is it? For years, I was a double-A cat, and I was Shanghai from one prison to the other, which maybe Lee thought was impressive. The young Lee will have heard all about the times his uncle Rod was on the run all over Britain, when his man Brenda would come and meet with me and assist me when I was at it. I suppose you could say I was a professional criminal, because shamefully, I was up to all sorts when I was a younger man. 
I still have a scar on my eye from fighting with Middlesbrough legend, fighting man Jackie Parsons. Afterwards, he got upset because he bent his wedding ring while hitting me. I went looking for him with a gun after that, but never found him. We later made up. I like Jackie. He was one of the old school. That man worked the doors until he was in his 70s, you know. When Lee was living with me at number 12 Fagate, Hamilton, I would have characters around the house like David Hugel, Keith McQuaid, Brian Charrington and John Black. So I suppose it could have looked glamorous to a young Lee. Blackie turned out to be a bit of a mentor to our Lee and was forever training him in the boxing gym. I did used to look after Brian Charrington and I'd done a few prison sentences, so maybe Lee was impressed with it all. Ultimately, he chose a similar path, didn't he? So that is Lee Duffy's notorious uncle, Roddy Jones. There's only a couple of pictures of him when he was older, but this guy, big geezer, could knock people out clean, was an armed robber, a respected villain around Middlesbrough before turning his life around. I was a charity worker, uh, going over to places like Romania, etc., to give aid. However, he did have controversy later in his life, his uncle, when he was accused of gun running <laughs> to Romania and places. I'm not sure exactly what happened with that trial. I think he may have got off, um, but he sadly passed now anyway. But he was definitely a character and someone who Lee Duffy looked up to. I've not really done anything on Lee Duffy before because I didn't know him. Um, I don't know anyone personally who did know him. Most of the stories have been done before. So I thought it was only right to ask Jamie Boyle to give me permission to read an extract out of his book because he'd done the thorough research on Lee Duffy. Um, he's done all the books, or, or the, the really good books on Lee Duffy. So who better to hear what Lee was like and also that infamous fight with Paul Sykes that uh, Lee's uncle had than Rod Jones, God rest his soul, himself. Um, the links in the description to the book, definitely worth purchasing, giving it a read if you're interested in Lee Duffy and all those stories and getting it first time from some of the people that knew him. With that being said, if you can smash the likes, if you enjoyed it, put in the comments any sort of views you had on Lee Duffy or if you knew him um, and your memories, etc. Or if there's anyone you else you would like me to cover or any really good true crime books out there, which you want me to reach out to the author to see if they mind me doing um, some promotional extracts and giving my thoughts on it. Okay, until next time.